Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2, Long, uh, War of the Chosen, the Lone Wolf run. That is what I was about to say. My name is Saiken and we're trying to beat the game on Legendary Iron Man difficulty with only a single soldier permission. It is two and a half years in and I figured I'll just use another interesting mission that you guys would uh, want to see. We got shut down for the... I I would say by now 20th time probably, but this time it's the Warlock and since I haven't had footage of him, figured it might be a good idea to give you a nice new mission also. It's a mission in the middle of a desert landscape, uh, which I found, yeah, just a refreshing change of what we've seen lately. We, as for the overall game, uh, just a short update here, we're currently proceeding to go to the next Golden Path mission, which is stealing the suit for the commander for the last mission. So that's another unique mission, uh, which I'm going to definitely record. Overall, it's more of the same. I've grinded for yet another nine months uh, in-game and probably half a month uh, out of game just to go through all of uh, the mission. It's uh, probably one of my most tedious and, and longest game achievements uh, that I'm going for, but Hogbite is doing very well and I'm looking forward to go into the next Golden Path mission. Before we do that though, uh, let's make sure that we don't lose the campaign by essentially uh, beating uh, this uh, specific mission here. We're starting uh, with the first pack already revealed, which uh, tells us that the map is incredibly small because the first uh, pack immediately spawned right into us. Didn't even have a chance to to get away from it. All right, so let's finish. Let's finish the Mac over here. Moving up. Okay, S for who is dangerous. Let's go with the... We're not going to attack the trucks yet. Let's go for the purifier next. The reason why I'm doing that is he has a tendency to run in and I don't want our um, Reaper to be spotted out. There we go. That's two down. I'm not so worried about the. I'm not so worried about um, finishing off the, um, the shield bearer here. I'm more concerned about him, to be honest. So we could go for run and gun. Probably not the worst idea. Will give us a nice little flanking position, and we won't trigger anything. Wait a second, so this here is telling me that you can see him? That's bullshit. Alright, moving up all the way to here. Yeah. We do have a pretty substantial fall of of um, of accuracy, so let's hope that rapid shot is going to hit him. It's a 50-50 on two shots. That is not good. Unfortunately, didn't kill him. And there is our enemy, the warlock. God. 
The sole reason why I did not bring a Templar with us because uh, so uh, he's immune to melee. He can summon mechanical units, which blue screen rounds are going to be very good against. He doesn't like reavers. Uh, that is perfect because we do have we do have one with us, and uh, having the uh, ability to just complete the unload on him will make it a fun experience. I think we're going to hit him for like fifteen per shot, um, six seven shots in a row. So he should be a fairly easy kill. But he will summon his zombies four at this point in the game. There is the shield bearer. I was fully expecting that we're going to take some damage here. Luckily we aren't. Alright, if we were to move up this could probably trigger the pack, but since we have Untouchable, I'm almost confident that we can do it. Yeah, and I'm not so worried about that. Okay. Before we do anything though, let's deal with the problems at hand, which definitely is going to be the shield bearer over here. we go that's one down we're still ignoring the vehicles I much rather would like to get rid of the cover here although as a low chance to hit uh, keep in mind the turrets are incredibly good in removing cover I could go all out, throw the axe, uh, uh, th throw the axe, essentially uh, do the blaster bomb and remove the cover here. Not sure if we want to do that yet, though. Almost fifty percent on the purifier, which is a good chance to hit him. Good, that's one down. Solid chances to go for the mech as well. My oh my, I think we can even take out the pack without using any of our cooldowns. Yep, we can. There we go, good enough chance to not get revealed at all. Mech is gone. And you know, I think it's fair to say that the only uh, person left over is the shield bearer and it's most likely not going to be such a big uh, pain. Aggressive movement would be up to here. However, I'm not 100% sure something standing here. Um, to move up here, I would have the advantage of using Blade Storm aggressively and getting like an extra hit out. But I don't want to trigger the three mutants. So instead, we're taking the safer route going into full cover to here.
Good. I would say that was a successful first and second round. Making progress. I'm so tempted to just sneak up and click the banish button to erase the warlock. problem with the zombies is not so much killing them or getting rid of them. If one of them hits Spectral Rupture, there's only so much we can do again uh, about it because the towers can't move away. They will get hit eventually. And since one of them always gets Spectral Rupture at the very beginning, or usually it, or, um, one of them always gets Spectral Rupture. Apparently this time not, which I find interesting. Good, let's start. Definitely want to take out the zombies first. Luckily, our defense matrix is exactly what we need against zombies. Many shots, guaranteed kills. There we go, and high percentage chance to hit. I was trying to just remove cover, <clears throat> but it appears our towers are pretty accurate today. Look at that. Two shots, two hits. Awesome. Love it. That's a solid kill. And the only person left over is Roby. Let's just overwatch. I don't want to trigger the other pack. Gotta kill the next pack soon though, as our main target needs to be the gun. Once that is deleted, we can take a much slower pace. The two win conditions that the enemies have is number one, the timer here, and the gun is the by far main contributor of that. And the second option would be essentially killing our uh, killing our operatives. Hmm. So by going to here, we do have a really solid chance of killing the Codex right away. We have a 50-50 chance of uh, even killing it with a normal shot. So let's use Sting. I'm okay with it. Just to get rid of the Codex. 100% hit chance. Even if we would have dealt minimum damage, it wouldn't have cloned itself. And that's the important part. All right, mutants have no idea.
Let's hit two birds with one stone, shall we? Which is... Get rid of the truck. And injure the mutant. Followed up by a solid kill. Now we have low percent chances to hit those two mutants. Nice. Was a good good shot. Let's take one shot and then go for an overwatch. 3% is not a lot, and I wasn't expecting to hit it, but we can still overwatch. Now, we can continue to go in aggressively. I'd like to flank him, but we don't have run and gun available, so... This here is probably the better the better approach to also stay in full cover. Okay, and we're looking at what? 11 to 13. Good chance of critting, but I would like to improve our chances. Okay, so much for improving our chances. Still confident that we can take him down. The crit chance is relatively high, so that's overall um, above 60% of for a solid one shot. Even if we're not killing him, we are in full cover. So I like this position much more than the other one. And the game awards us with a hair trigger. Might as well try the same uh, move again. There we go. Since we do have Emplaceable, I'd like to move up to here. That mo uh, does a couple of things for us. Number one, it motivates the mutant to to move up further um, using his melee attack. That again um, uh, will trigger our blade storm. And secondly, it motivates the mutant to to attack uh, Roby, who would have had Emplaceable, uh, Untouchable. So. We kind of tricked the AI here into uh, using their melee attack and essentially getting killed. Gotta know how the AI works. That's what I'm telling the viewers every single time. The more game knowledge you have and the more you can predict what the AI does, <coughs> the easier the game becomes. Okay. Um... We're moving almost all the way up. We do not yet have a line of sight on the actual battery. I guess that'll be okay. Roby moves up, we're reloading. And it's a lot of overwatches with our defense matrix, which, by the way, is probably the best building that I've built in this entire run. It's just so good. It is just so good. It has saved us countless times. If you ever experience having problems going into, into um, either being shut down or into... Um, uh, chosen having too much intel and thus grinding down your adventure, this here is the way to go. Hands down, the very best building. Very good. Can't stress enough how I like Bladestorm. I 
think by moving over here, we have a pretty good view. Okay. So. Wow, we can even hit enemies back there. That's great. But I much rather would like to make sure that we're not being in any more danger. So it's going to be time to get rid of all of this here. Just out of curiosity, if we were to explode it, uh, that would deal just the same amount. Wait. So that's four fields of distance. That is also four fields, yeah. That is, so it's the same range. Might as well use one of our guns for it. Ooh, and someone has been camping right behind it. Seven armor, 25 hit points. That must have been... That must have been a gatekeeper. Yep, look at that. That's the remains of a gatekeeper. Gatekeeper, mech. Got a shield bearer here. Probably something else. Pretty strong pack that just instantly died. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I'll take it. Moving all the way over here, we're fighting the Warlock next. Such a lovely map. I like it when it's a bit more cramped and open spaced because then we can get to the target really fast. I think the map is playing this time pretty much in our favor. All right, moving in. So we can see the Warlock. And let's just reload right now because I can already tell you Banish is going to be an option. Warlock is shell shocked as a as a weakness, which means our blaster bomb is going to deal additional damage to it. With no chance of hitting the warlock from back here, and that's fine. I don't really mind that. Let's see how fast we can execute him. Gotta get into position, and a nice banish would be the optimal solution. Oh, we are ready, dear Warlock. Uh, redeemed is not exactly what I would call it, but let's see. Nice. Get some good shots on him. Could go all the way up to here, but I think that would be a bit extravagant. He will try to mind control us. And this here should be a good starter. Let's start with Banish. Leave our world. 
Nice. Very nice shredding. And <laughs> we directly executed him. There you go. I am very happy how that turned out. It just shows uh, the incredible power of of banish. And by the way, I mean he we didn't. I there's no combat lock, so we can't see. But I was uh, I was seeing that we are hitting him for 11 points of damage. The first shot was six plus four shred plus one armor, and the others were hitting for 11 and 12 as uh, as well. And he was losing armor after the first after the first. Um, hit. So every consecutive hit was just getting worse and worse for him essentially. So even if we wouldn't have executed him, uh, he would probably have had a very very hard time keeping up. There was an explosion for him lined up afterwards. So yeah. Definitely a weaker enemy but for our specific case unfortunately not as weak as you might imagine because uh, since we're doing a lot of our uh, missions with the Templar interestingly enough the interestingly enough uh, the warlock is actually relatively strong Okay, hmm. Let me think about it. Could kill one of the sectoids right away with the remote start over here. That'll be easy. I think the gatekeeper is the biggest issue. We are getting back into shadows. Let's see if if our towers can hit uh, the remote mine. No, they can't. Ah, that is unfortunate. Okay, what we could do is, I mean, we could move up, essentially use the blaster bomb and also blast up the mine. That'll deal a lot of damage and completely shred the gatekeeper. Probably the right play here. We will also get untouchable. Because the sector it will die as well. So yeah, for shredding purpose that was good. Now, let's remote start uh, the other one. And the only person visible is currently Roby. Roby has a mind shield, so can't be mind controlled. Gateway would deal some damage to him if the... Uh, if the gatekeeper opts to do that, at six points of damage. Melee attack would not deal any damage because Roby has untouchable. What the fuck? I feel cheated. Why doesn't he have untouchable? That's bullshit. He killed uh, 
the sector over here. All right. Learn something new. We can't rely on explosives to trigger untouchable. Which is really a shame, to be honest. We could definitely kill the sector, get untouchable that way. Could also go and hit the gatekeeper. Says percentage chance that he's not going to die. Hmm. We have enough hit points to survive another hit. And the sector is really not a big problem at the moment. So that's a likely, that is definitely, or that is very likely at least one hit. Two if we play our cards right. That's one hit. If he can hit a second time, it's going to die. Uh, he can't, that's unfortunate. We do still have... We do still have uh, the ability to um, blade storm, so if he would go into melee, that'll be devastating for him. Question is, do we take a 50-50 and risk being spotted out? The last pack over here we can already see has an Archon and... Wait a second. Alright, so as I was saying, there's one more pack over here. And that's a relatively easy pack. We already killed the one hard pack over here and that's the second hard pack so there are no further um, harder packs in the, this mission which means we don't necessarily need uh, concealment as much so might as well try to kill him. And even if I would have missed, it would have been only a 50-50 chance because it's her first shot after being revealed. Her first real shot, the remote starts don't count. So that was a calculated risk. And luckily we dealt with uh, the gatekeeper. Fortunately, Roby took some damage. I still call bullshit on it, but whatever. Can't change it now. I'm, I'm you here. Superior expanded magazine is good. I can definitely see the value of an Alarium core as well for suits and for some additional ammunition slash special weapons. We're moving up. There is the fleeing sectoid. Might as well prep this pack here. A little bit of damage. Yeah, unfortunately, can't really hit anything. Why am I even trying? That was a misclick. 21% is not good, but it is better than 0%. So might as well give it a shot.
Yeah, and that's the AI cheating again. I I really don't like it, and at this point I should be probably aware about it. He would have had dozens of pathing ways, but taking a specific pathing way just to make sure that we uh, that we spot out the Reaper. That's a pretty cheap shot in my opinion. Well, karma even karma even set out. <clears throat> it's a big fat miss for every enemy. Could have been d uh, dangerous. So. We got to deal with the highest priority targets first. Sun Lancer certainly is a high priority target, then the Mac and then the Archon. Three percent, let's start with the lowest chances. 3% is definitely by far the lowest chance, but it's not 0%, so might as well give it a shot. If for nothing else, uh, then cover removal. Lancer with a 5% hit chance. A lot of it is his innate defense. We already got him flanked. 5% is not worth it. 20% on the other hand is unlikely, but you could maybe hit it. Like it's 1 in 5 shots, which means if everything would have had 20% chance. we would have gotten probably more than one hit out of it. So, moving forward, what's the right play here? We certainly got to take a nice piece of cover. This over here would work. Not so afraid about the sector. It doesn't terribly scare me. If we were to remote start this, 12 damage would be a start against the heavy mech. Hitting the heavy mech probably would be even better, more beneficial. We could certainly go with kind of that line of play, but it wouldn't kill anyone. And we need kills now, plus solid cover. So we do have run and gun. I'm asking myself, is there a way for us to kill something and then use blade storm afterwards? Could move. Here's the deal. We could move back to here. Remote start. That's a hundred percent hit. Twelve points of damage. Good enough. Could move up, Roby. Roby kills the mech, and Roby then moves to here. Stun Lancer acts first, hits into Untouchable, takes a beating with the Blade Storm, and yeah, the fire is not the worst. The only problem here would then be the Archon, but the Archon could go into Blazing Pinions if we're positioned here and here. That's close enough, or we're positioning ourselves here and here. It's close enough for Blazing Pinions, uh, which could trigger him to go for a Blazing Pinions attack. And then we do have the good old Sectoid here. Other option would be to, quote, uh, to sort of fully retreat.
how would that would how would that look like we could go to here uh, it's still too close we don't have the movement in order to pull that one off Yeah, I think that's the wisest plan. I will reposition. Repositioning ourselves over here. Lots of 100% shots, definitely not a 100% shot for the mech, so we're going to go with a remote start route instead. Alright, Romeo moves up to here. into 12 points of damage there is a chance that that's not going to be an insta kill which is frightening hmm how much is a melee attack 10 to 12 Okay, so we could run and gun to here and essentially hit the Stun Lancer with a 70 plus percent chance to, to uh, kill him, way more than that even. Any crit would kill him, so yeah, it's a 73 percent chance to kill him. This one here would be pretty solid 60-60 actually, so that's a worse chance. By standing here, we have a few advantages and disadvantages. We could definitely kill the mech uh, with a blade storm attack. Oh gosh, that's a difficult... I'm sorry for taking so long, but I want to make sure that we're surviving this. Okay, so here's the thought process. By standing here, we'd be in open fire. That's not good. Uh, standing here means we could get melee attacked, but at least not moved upon and then shot. Melee attack will trigger at least the retaliation. We can uh, we can survive one hit, two hits probably not going to be... Well, we could also survive two hits. We do have two armor, but it's going to be close. Moving to here, we'll definitely kill the Sun Lancer because even if we just shoot him, Blade Storm Attack will kill him 90%. 90%, not definitely, 90%. Standing here is the advantage to be able to kill him. Optima if, if we were to shoot him, he would. Uh, we would get untouchable and we could get... Uh, we could get an attack off, so that really would be the optimal case. However, if we do not kill the Sun Lancer, we're essentially fucked. Alright, here we go. Let's crit him. Nice! That's exactly what we were looking for. Hair trigger... Hair, what, 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 what? Hair trigger? Ooh. Now here's a problem. We do have a hair trigger um, and we do have him placeable. I don't know if we can take a shot after moving. That's a, because run and gun only allows you to do it once. I don't know what the rules are for do it, uh, for regaining an action with um, hair trigger and implacable as well. Theoretically, you're supposed to be able to move up and then still take a shot. 
But since we're in full cover, I really don't see the disadvantage of just taking the 90% shot. Uh, there's maybe one disadvantage. Could position ourselves here. That's like a bonus attack against this guy. Can't fully reach the sector. Yeah, I think we're going. We, we will need to get to here. That's at least 100% bonus attack. And the way that I do understand uh, the mechanics, we should still have run and gun active. We do have a hair trigger, so this here should not end his turn. I was right. Okay, we will get we'll get that off, and there's a second kill. Nice, very nice. Well, that was a stupid turn. Our bonus attack unfortunately missed, and our untouchable will go into a flamer. Alright, we're not quite done yet. Our turrets will need to fight their own battle here. Those three are formidable foes and might end up uh, losing a turret or two. We're really burning. That's what I like about the game. Sometimes XCOM finds ways of still screwing you over, even though you did everything right. Like in this case, I had Untouchable going, but yet we're still burning. Just because cover collapsed. <laughs> it's so stupid if you think about it. Just because cover collapsed, we we were essentially getting hammered for that. Moving is ordered. Hundred percent chance to hit the purifier. I'll take this one here as a setup. Perfect timing for an execution. So I don't want to deal with the burning, to be honest. Which means we're just going to hunker down. And let's fight the battle against the mutants and the Spectre over here. We got them exposed, which is good. Let's try to kill the mutant. Nice little hit. Can we finish him? We can, very good. Next up, let's go for the Spectre. Spectre is definitely weaker against the towers because he can take them over. And we were pretty damn lucky with our shots, so obliterated most of the pack before it even could deal damage to us. Good, let's start with 
Roby and the Reaper over here. My life is in your hands. Setting up the Archon nicely. And now it's time to get a bit more aggressive. We do have a blade storm attack if the initial attack misses. Well, there's always a chance for dodging, right? I'm fine. We do have a 90% chance of killing him with a blade storm attack. Nice, we eliminated the pack. Wasn't even close. Might as well take one shot to get rid of cover. Wasn't really worth it. The tree still stands. And Overwatch, just in case something else comes up. Ah. Uh. I, I don't know why he's missing that often. I call bullshit on on the miss. But it is what it is. Sometimes you continue missing very often. And certainly in this particular case Let's not get biased. It's always easy to to say uh, that should have been a hit. In this particular mission, I think it's fair to say that Roby should have hit a few more of uh, the shots. However, other shots that we shouldn't have hit were solid hits. So overall, I think everything was fine. Got slightly injured. Wanted to do the mission flawless. But unfortunately some of the things weren't working out as expected. The one thing that I really detest is the ability of the AI to just spot out the location of our soldiers. That was highly unnecessary. The whole fight here could have gone very, very different if we weren't spotted out. But yeah, that's a different story. And with a final kill, we're ending the mission. GG, GG everyone, that was another defense mission wanted to show you just quickly where we stand overall now that we've defeated the warlock we're back to the grind and we are done with the mission and here we go so you can see we had we scored quite a few kills i mean roby uh, by himself is now like already clocking 400 kills so typical loot and we got another negative trade if we're looking at the overall situation just to show you a bit where we stand we are okay on the avatar project and essentially uh, sort of made our way through here already had that um, we made our way over here just lost a bit of territory in between i'm not defending it um, so yeah 
we're we're losing it from time to time again so we're currently here essentially preparing for this mission the black side data co coordinates and i'm probably also going to spend we, we just built a tower i'm probably also going to spend the other 80 indo here to get into west africa and uh, start getting uh, that facility we currently have two facilities one in chile well, i'm trying to get coordinates for that one it's probably too far to to make it worthwhile and one here in west africa as for the general training for those of you who are interested we already finished and for uh, we already finished four psionics which can tell you how long we're really really training we the sonic building was the last building that we built we now got four magist uh, magisters already got our next set of uh, troopers uh, ready i'm really using the same soldiers as always Scythe and Roby to defend uh, sometimes the new templar stormwalker and Roby to defend and Hawkbite and Dark Tower are running Covered Ops missions 24 by 7. It's just, this is their life. Uh, Dark Tower Noxus, without doing anything other than Covered Ops missions, is almost um, up to. Uh, he's already at Captain, he's, he's almost up to Colonel uh, level. He'll, he'll eventually get there. So that shows you how intense the training has been yeah we researched everything there is no active research that we're currently doing we within the shadow uh, chamber we have no further um, research available gotta get the suit in order to make anything happen so that is that and in terms of new research, we're out of research since quite a while. So that's really it. That's where we stand. I'll continue grinding in the background. And the next mission is probably the Black Side Coordinates, which we're going to play through with Hogbite. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the idea of a Lone Wolf campaign, um, please support it with a nice little comment or a like down below. And see you in the next run. Bye-bye, guys.